Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I want to talk about link aggregation with PFSense. It's actually relatively easy to set up. I'm going to walk through a couple scenarios, and we're going to use a switch that supports LACP. If you don't have a switch that supports LACP, there are other modes of operation to still give you a little bit more bandwidth, essentially by tying the ports together or redundancy, depending on what you're looking for. But it is obviously going to work the best if you have a switch that does support LACP. Check the documentation for the switch you have to see if that's supported. And let's get started. If you can click the like button and first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. And we'll start here with the manual. What is link aggregation? And link aggregation is where you're going to essentially tie some ports together to act as one logical interface inside of PFSense. This can be for redundancy. This can be for aggregating bandwidth together. But as a warning, they do have this right down here. Using a lag does not necessarily guarantee full throughput equal to the sum of all interfaces. In particular, a single flow will not exceed the throughput of a lag member interface. So in this video, we're going to tie two ports together, but that does not mean the two one gig ports we tie together are going to automatically give us two gigs of bandwidth. There is factors involved. What that does mean is a connection from my computer that may loop through this and go to another system and my computer is connected at one gig. We're going to do the demo in a video for that. Um, that's no problem. I can get the one gig. What are, what's the other one doing then? Well, we can have another session that also uses one gig. So cumulatively, individual flows can use the bandwidth of the ports. But if we have a 10 gig connection and we're trying to squeeze it over down to the two gig, well, no, that's still a single flow. So even though we let's stay because we have a 10 gig switch here, we started at 10 gig. We go across the two, it can not automatically, depending on the type of traffic, if the each flow of the traffic can exceed the single link. This is where the confusion comes in a lot with how lag works. So it's not an automatic, you're just going to get the full power because it's assuming that it's one logical interface, but it will put the data across there. Now, main reason for doing this, of course, is you have multiple flows that are going across and you want them spread across. The other common reason for doing this it doesn't make sense when you're doing it with one switch, but doing a lag interface between multiple switches for redundancy where you have PFSense connected with multiple redundancies and you have the other devices behind it, other servers perhaps connected to multiple switches with lag for redundancy, that prevents a switch failure. I've had some people say, well, shouldn't I use it because I have the extra parts and I need it because what if a cable fails? Cable failures, not unheard of, but are uncommon. Switch failures, way more common than a failure of cable. So if you want to do this in your home lab and you're saying, I just want to do it because I have the ports and I don't like seeing them empty, awesome. You're not really gaining too much redundancy because the likelihood of a little cable failing, hmm, less likely, but hey, it is there. But I'm going to walk you through how to create the interface and how to set this up. So let's go back over here to PFSense. And we have a SG5100 with a pretty basic load here and a LAN. Now, the first question I've had a few people ask me is, can I just convert my LAN to be lag? Not exactly. So we're going to go over here, interface, assignments, lag. And when we try to add one here, I have IX0 all the way through IX3 available. But if we look at the interface assignments, we see that LAN's assigned to IGB1, and I can't include it in there. This is actually by design. You can't add anything to a lag that already is assigned. So you can't just flip a switch and convert your LAN over to lag. You have to actually create a new interface. Now I could just delete this right here because I'm actually logged in externally from this. I'm logged in through the WAN side, so I can delete the LAN and just rebuild it. Um, that's absolutely a possibility. We're going to go ahead and just create another interface um, all together and just walk you through the process. For the first thing we need to do is pick out what ports we want to use. We're going to use the last two ports. Now, the nice thing with you get an SG5100, 
um, you're going to have these labeled. You have to figure out what ports they are if you built this yourself. But the SG5100 has all the port labels down below each individual port. Makes this really easy to figure out. So we're going to use the ports right here on the end, the two on the end, which are labeled IX3 and IX2. So we're just going to go ahead and choose those like we have here. And then we have to choose the lag protocol type. Now the lag protocol types are, and they, they have a nice explainer right here, and they're also explained in the manual, where you can do failover, load balance, or round robin. Warning, if you do round robin specifically, it will try to just keep sending the data back and forth on there, and you actually seem to get a little bit less bandwidth when I was doing some testing with it, because it's going, I'm gonna be helpful and just keep sending these packets, some over here and some over there. This round robining actually seemed to cut some of the performance I got when I was doing this. Load balance might be a little bit more uh, intuitive for that. And failover, of course, is just failover. Now, the other options down here, failover, load balance, and robin, don't require any special configuration of the switch because you're telling PFSense to handle it at the interface and look for the other interfaces. But this can create confusion. So if you set up a failover, and you have two switches, and then the switches talk to each other, if the link to where the switches talk to each other becomes broken, but the link stays up between PFSense and the switches, now you have a problem where it goes, I don't think I seen a fail because the switch didn't turn off, but it'll be confused as to how to communicate. So the best way to do this is gonna be LACP for the aggregation of bandwidth. Not in a failover situation, LACP is gonna be specifically to aggregate the bandwidth and that does require switch support. So that's the one we're gonna choose. But like I said, in a failover situation, you know, you can do that for redundant for the switches and that works really well for that redundancy. And maybe if someone asks, I'll do a video on that, but it's really just putting two switches together, having them talk to each other and putting one link in each side of the failover. I may build out a bigger lab scenario for a failover demo with storage servers, which is actually an even more common scenario for this. But I have set these up in data centers where they have one leg of each of these going to each switch. That way, if they have a switch failure in a data center, their PFSense can talk. And yes, this does work with a whole HA setup. You can bond together um, multiple ones across HA, across this. It gets very complex very quickly, but yes, it is capable of doing it. And I'll leave a link to this. This is also part of the Netgate docs. They walk you through an entire layer two redundancy setup. So like I said, you can get pretty advanced with this and it works really well. But I'll at least cover the basics on how to get this interface set up and configured. We'll go here, we're gonna choose those two interfaces, IX2, IX3, LACP, and uh, laggy interface. Pretty simple. Then we're gonna go over here to interface assignments because we've now grouped them together, now we have to assign the interface. So let's go here and we'll call it the laggy interface. Then we click on it here, just like any other interface because now they're bonded together and we'll call this laggy LAN. This will be our new LAN when we're done. We're gonna go static. Let's give it a static IP address of 192.168.99.1. Whoops. 99.1. And from here, it's pretty much the same standard interface setup. So it's gonna be LAN, static, 99.1. It's gonna be a slash 24. Save, apply. Firewall, rules, there's our laggy LAN, and we're not gonna dive deep into rules. I have plenty of videos on that. We're just gonna do any, any, open it all up, let it fly, let all the data pass through, so no restrictions on this. Then we're gonna go to DHCP server on our laggy LAN here. And we'll go from 50 to 250. Plenty of range, plenty of addresses on here. We've enabled it, we've got rules, save. But now, here's the important aspect that has to be done. We have to go in and configure the switch to work. Right now, we've got these ports doing nothing. And if they're doing nothing, that's fine, except they're not set up for lag. So if you plug in LACP configured ports to these, it's going to confuse the switch. It's going to say, I'm not speaking the same language and it will break. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna convert these over. So currently this is plugged into LAN. This is the port four 
on uh, this right here. So we're actually gonna move it over, but before we do so, I gotta push the programming changes to this Unify switch. I say that because Unify switches don't have an interface, they use the Unify software for the control plane, so we're gonna push the configuration. But if you have a switch where you have a web interface on it, it's kind of the same answer. Before you break it and have access to it, you wanna make sure you push these changes to it. We're gonna go over here and configure port one, and we're gonna say, Laggy PF Sense, so we're plugging in here. And uh, then we're gonna go for the profile overrides and we're gonna choose aggregate. What are we gonna aggregate to? Ports one and two. That means port one and two are gonna get assigned the LACP protocol. Now, if we were using all four of the ports, we could just change that to a four or even a three if there's three of the ports and so on. And it's going to grab all the ones next to it. We only need ports one and two because we set up only a two port setup. We're gonna hit apply and we watch it provision right here and it's done provisioning. Then we can plug it in and get this set up on the other side. So it provisioned, the settings have been changed. And now if we look at this one, we just look at profile for port two, it's aggregating from there. Now comes a pretty simple part. We're gonna move this over to the other side. So we're gonna grab a little cable here and plug them in like this. So we did port one, we did port two, and we have them down here. Actually, we'll slide the switch down. There we go. So now those two end ports are plugged into port one and two. Now the order itself doesn't matter. Um, this is LACP. This is gonna communicate LACP to this. This is gonna have to take a second to get a new IP address because, well, we changed IPs, we're not using the LAN anymore. Matter of fact, while we're waiting for that to think and uh, get connected, well, I'm gonna speed up the process by power cycling it. So I'm gonna pull the power out, power it back on. While that's doing that, we're gonna go back over here to PF Sense. And remember, I'm connected to the WAN, so um, none of this really matters that this part happened at all. And you can see that currently LAN is down. And if we wanted to, we can just go over here to Interfaces, LAN, I could just disable this interface. I don't even need it anymore. We're not gonna use it. And the other one can become everything I do for LAN. Jump ahead a couple of minutes uh, while this booted because I realized, and for those closely looking at the detail and familiar with this switch, that first port's the console port. This is port one. I was actually troubleshooting something that I plugged in this way. So yes, I did plug it in accidentally to the console port. Didn't hurt anything, but it certainly didn't. Uh, allow the two interfaces to work. So now that we have plugged in a proper interface and the switch is booted up and we have our lag interface configured, we can look right here and we see lag interface ports one and two, and this is just the aggregate port interface. So now we got the two redundant interfaces. Let's go back over here, we look at the status and we have it set right here. So we have laggy LAN, auto select, and we see that it's up and our LAN is down. A couple side notes over here, we're gonna go to status, system logs, now, one thing I wanna show is we're gonna drop an interface. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna accidentally lose an interface, plug, unplug one and kinda of show what PF Sense and how that handles it. So we go back over here after we unplug it, refresh the page, we do get a link status down. So with the link status down, as I mentioned though, in the laggy LAN here, it still shows up because still one of them is up, just not both of them are up. So technically we do have a connection. So we'll plug that back in then go back over here to status, system logs, system state change back to up. So pretty straightforward there. Next, we're gonna take this network cable here and plug my laptop in. So my laptop's gonna get plugged in one of the extra ports here, not into the console port, won't make that mistake again. So now my laptop should get an IP address handed out by the PF Sense through the switch, through the LACP lag interface, or lag LACP, so technically, LACP is a sub protocol of lag for those that are probably gonna call me out on that little detail. Let's uh, see if I get an IP address on this. Move this over. And there's the IP address I got, 99.101. And let's go ahead and ping the PF Sense, which is at that 99.1. Pretty straightforward, it pings. So while it's pinging, and so you see what I'm doing right here, I'm gonna drop one of the connections and watch the pings. And it's going to pause for a second while it figures out, oh, you need to go across the other path. This is how the redundancy works. It's pretty seamless, except 
this was a packet flow coming from one system. So because LECP would be figuring out the flows from different systems and putting them across the connections, which uh, cable that goes across is gonna be a little bit, not, the word random isn't there, uh, but now that this one's coming up and down, it's gonna go over here. Once it decides which cable is going over, it goes over there unless there's a change in topology. So now that we know it's going probably across the black cable, we'll go ahead and do this, unplug it. Oh, it went back across this one. But now that it's going across the other cable, now we're gonna plug this back in. So listen for the click. It doesn't pause to start the flow back on the other side. This is how LACP works with the lag and the protocols together. Once it decides which cable it's going over, that flow will continue to go over that cable and it's dynamically figuring it out. That's the advantage of the way this protocol works. Now, a couple other side notes inside of PFSense of how this works in terms of how about VLANs or everything else. Actually, no change there. So even though the interfaces are bonded together, because they're bonded together as, they're, the physical layer is bonded together to work as a single interface, as, as we're calling it laggy LAN, we go to interfaces, assignments, and we do something like a VLAN and we add and we say we want a VLAN tag, I don't know, 88, just so we have something, Whoop, 888, sure, why not? You choose the parent interface and the parent interface is gonna be lag zero. So all the other rules apply. So by doing that, there's the parent interface and we go back to the assignments. We can then assign VLAN 888 to here and then there's no change inside the Unify software when you assign a VLAN, it still just works the same. It's not going to be any difference just because you're lagging these together. So you can still, and we can edit these ports, for example. And I have a VLAN test one, two, three in here. I'd have to define it in here if I wanted to use VLAN 88 like I did in there. But you get the idea. You can even assign to lag interfaces the VLAN. Now it's gonna be varied how this works with different model switches, but it's not a big deal in terms of how it works, including when you're building out a storage network, maybe you want a dedicated VLAN just for all your storage devices, you can lag those interfaces together. You know, obviously LACP and that dependency still is required in the switches if you want to use full LACP, but it's that easy to set up in PFSense. It's pretty straightforward. It works just as another interface. So any other videos I've done where I'm talking about assigning something to the interface, once you build the lag interface, Way you go, it just works. Now, one last thing, what if you wanted to add one more? Well, you can do that. So we're gonna go here, and first we'll, as I said, you have to always make sure we have the switch on there. So we have one, two, three now. So we're gonna apply this, and we're gonna let this configuration push. While we're doing that, where's that third interface gonna come from? Well, go over here to lag. You can edit these because we still haven't assigned anything to IX1. So it's still just an empty port and hit save. So now it's going to apply this here. We're provisioning the switch. We'll give the switch a second to catch up, but while we're doing that, we go over here, snap, and they're crisscrossing the cables here, but you get the idea. Um, now I've got all three of these ports and all three assigned to this. Same rules apply. and. Now it's just LACP is gonna to talk to all three ports. Let's see if the switch provisioned. Yep, it pushed the provision on there. So now it says port two, port three, and that easy. Now you didn't have to do this. Now this would disrupt users, but you didn't have to do anything uh, else in PFSense to add more to this aggregation group. We've just added one more. We could just as easily drop one from it. Now, when you do this, there is a disruption in network. So if you're routing a bunch of traffic over it and you change these assignments, when it does configure the switches, there is a disruption to rebuild them into the link. But hey, that's not that big of a deal. The disruption is pretty minor and happens pretty much fast. We did this essentially in real time. So if there's someone on a VoIP call, they're gonna be angry at you because it may drop the call, but for the most part, it's a pause in the internet and everything keeps working. So I'll leave links to the pages and the documentation from NetGate on this to dive deeper into this. And uh, leave comments below or head over to forums and you know talk about maybe uh, suggestions you have for having me lab out a larger setup or install. But I am gonna do another video on this topic related to doing this with storage servers. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and 
Let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.